Measure twice, cut once. Carpenters do that so that they make darn sure when they put a cut on the wood that they haven't mismeasured and cut it too short. And once years and years ago, I actually was on a crew where that happened. <laughs> it was a very expensive mistake with huge beams that were going to support a garage. But the point is in tennis, there's a way to have the same concept about measuring twice to cut once. And here's what that means. To simplify your tennis, you're really trying to prepare neutral, no commitment. So that all I'm doing is turning to the side. There's no up and down. But the measuring comes when I start to read where the ball is. So that if it's low, here's my neutral turn. And now I'm measuring. And now I'll cut. And the most common error in tennis is just the opposite. Someone prepares with a commitment. They have not measured the low ball. And then when they go to hit it by cutting it, they actually foul it up. Now, cut also means when you're spinning it. But what I'm getting at is this. The simplest way to play tennis is to measure the ball. Here's a high one. I've measured, and now I'm ready to play. And as you watch others and as you work on your own game, start to notice what happens when that ball hits the tape. It's halfway across the court. At that moment, you didn't know high or low, but you did know forehand or backhand. And if you've been neutral, you can adjust. But if you haven't been neutral, you won't. Now, how else can you practice this on court? And we've got demos of this on the half volley. And since the ball is going to be met at a low level, I've got to measure at a low level. And as you work on your game, what I'm about is always trying to have you simplify to simplify. And measuring twice to cut once is as good a way as I can describe how to play simpler tennis, error-free tennis, where somebody says, man, you made very few errors today, and you say, yeah, it was one of those days.